Before we start, please support our channel by subscribing, and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. Hello everyone, welcome to Game A Movie Recap. This time, we will tell a film with a military prison background. The film, entitled The Last Castle, tells the story of a special prison for paramilitaries who have suspected legal cases. But in the prison it seems that the adjustment of humanity is not in accordance with what should have happened. Many prisoners died in vain because of the poor leadership that was there. Until one day the prison arrived ex-general, who would be sentenced to 10 years. The general's entry made all the prisoners obey him. The general immediately had a plan to take over command of the prison from the Lord. So, can they seize a prison just by relying on a general? Without further ado, let's get started. This scene begins by showing a military prison that looks beautiful and peaceful. The prisoners seem to be doing their job as usual. They exercise, relax, and talk in the field. Then the scene moves to the prison lord named Winter. He is a colonel assigned to manage the prison according to his wishes. Winter received information from his men that they were about to receive a three-star general named Erwin. Erwin has just admitted his guilt and he will be jailed for 10 years. Hearing Erwin's name made Winter quite surprised, because Erwin was one of the generals whom he greatly respected and liked his men. Winter informed that Erwin would be taken to prison at 5 p.m. All the guards were immediately ordered to welcome Erwin at the prison gate. Not long after, a bus came. Curious inmates quickly swarmed the gate area to see who the new inmates would be in their prison. When Erwin got off the bus, all the inmates were shocked. A bookie named Yates immediately threw a lottery to them, to bet whether Erwin would kill himself in six weeks or if he stayed. Erwin, who has very good charisma, was immediately greeted by Winter, he was even invited to enter his office. Don't forget Winter also served Erwin a glass of lemonade so he could relax for a while. Then, Winter explained what facilities and buildings were in the prison. Erwin only watched when Winter explained it, then did not forget that Winter wanted Erwin to sign his books, which would be very valuable if Erwin was willing. And of course Erwin was willing to sign it. While Winter is looking for the book, Winter's men talk with Erwin about the collections of swords and bullets in prison. Erwin said that people who collect items like this or books rarely go directly to the battlefield. They usually just sit in the office responding to reports. Hearing Erwin speak like that made Winter discourage him. He also asked his men to immediately take Erwin to his cell. When Erwin walked, all the inmates immediately asked whether Erwin would commit suicide. How many people has he killed? And a lot of questions came to him. Erwin was silent, he then entered his cell and rested. The next day, the scene shows a fight taking place in the field. This was because on that day, Winter only gave all the inmates one basketball. The fight was quite severe, especially Yates, as a bookie used the fight as a field for him to make money. Because the fight was too serious, Winter asked his men to set off the alarm for the inmates to lie down. Then the tower guards shot the inmates who were fighting with rubber bullets. After the inmates were dismissed, they went to the canteen to eat lunch. When Erwin was eating his food, he was suddenly approached by a doctor who claimed to have worked with him. The doctor's name was Lee Bernard. Convicted of possession of marijuana. Before long, his comrades began to arrive. They asked Erwin if he had friends in the Pentagon. Because if they want to have friends there, they ask Erwin to report this prison. The reason they want to report, apparently they are fed up with the current system. 13 prisoners were killed and 11 others injured. Then the wardens also only gave basic medical training which resulted in many casualties. After hearing the complaint, Erwin replied that he no longer wanted to deal with anything. All he wanted to do was serve his sentence and enjoy his old age with his four-year-old grandson. Then Erwin went to his own cell. When he was reading a book, Yates suddenly approached him. He wanted to tell that he and other inmates were making a bet, whether Erwin would kill himself. Before saying that, Yates himself introduced himself, if he is a child of the father who served with Erwin in Hanoi, in 1981. Of course Erwin recognized Yates' father, he told him that his father was a good soldier, but not long ago they talking, Erwin was suddenly called to face the living room. Turns out his son visited him. Erwin was very happy and immediately asked about his grandson's news. Erwin's son said that his grandson was very healthy. His grandson got an A in every subject. Getting news like that certainly made Erwin happy. But the question for his son is why Erwin would admit his mistake. Erwin asked not to discuss it. 
He did it because he felt guilty. Because she couldn't do anything, she could only pray for his father to keep himself safe while in prison. Then the scene moved to Erwin who was sitting while writing. He was suddenly approached by a prisoner named Aguilar. Aguilar often saluted him. Erwin was then curious, what rank Aguilar was before he entered the prison. Aguilar replied, if he was just a core mariner. Then Erwin again asked what was his mistake to come here. Aguilar replied, if until now he still did not know what was wrong with him. He admitted that he had injured a colleague very badly. From a distance, Winter watched their conversation. Then Winter ordered his man to punish Aguilar because he continued to salute Erwin, even though he had been forbidden. Aguilar was eventually sentenced to salute the flag for several days. Erwin felt sorry for asking Aguilar to stop the salute. All of the guards immediately arrested Erwin, they asked Erwin not to interfere in the affairs of other prisoners. But Erwin who had the soul of a general, kept asking Aguilar to stop. Until finally the guards were forced to hit Erwin many times until he fell. Then, Winter immediately intervened. He apologized for the incident and asked Erwin to conform to the existing regulations. Because Erwin always interfered in the affairs of other prisoners, Winter finally sentenced him back. The next day, Erwin was sentenced to move all stones that weighed 25 pounds. Of course it becomes material for the inmates to gamble. Yates as the dealer, quickly gathered people who wanted to bet, whether Erwin would be strong enough to move all the stones. Slowly, Erwin moved the stones one by one, Lee Bernard as the doctor asked Erwin to take a drink for a while if he felt tired. Bernard also advised him to take off his clothes, because if Erwin kept pushing himself, he would inevitably faint. Finally, Erwin took off his clothes and saw some scars that made all the prisoners surprised. When one more stone remained, Erwin slowly lost his concentration. He accidentally bumped into a prisoner, causing him to fall and fall on the rock he was carrying. Lucky Bernard managed to get him to concentrate again, and Erwin declared still strong to work. Apparently Erwin not only moved the stone, but he was also asked to move another stone the next day. But because of what Erwin did, the prisoners kept crowding. Winter decides to punish Erwin even more by putting him in solitary confinement. Winter also had time to apologize because he was forced to follow the existing regulations. Regarding Aguilar, Winter tells that he once beat his senior with a hammer until Aguilar's senior was seriously injured. He just wanted to remind that not all prisoners can be defended by Erwin. Then after a few days he was in the isolation room, Winter took him out. When Erwin had returned to his cell, Yates approached him. He gave 36 rolls of cigarettes because Aguilar had won the bet over him. But Erwin called Aguilar, he asked him to share the cigarettes with other inmates because he doesn't smoke. They then went back to talking, Yates told him if his father used to say that it was Erwin who kept his father alive in Hanoi. Erwin just smiled without wanting to show that he had saved Yates' father's life. Then the scene moves to Erwin who comes to an inmate named Beaupre, who is building a wall. At that time, Erwin only asked what the wall was made for. Beaupre only replied if he was just doing his job. Then Erwin approached a stone there, there was a name of a soldier who had built this prison in ancient times. Then Erwin told if the wall is not just a pile of stones, but it could be a self-defense. Hearing that Beaupre asked how they did it. Erwin replied he did not know. He told Beaupre to ask Aguilar because his father was a bricklayer. Finally after Erwin gave those words, the next day they decided to tear down the wall and rebuild it according to Aguilar's directions. The result this time the wall looks neater than before. Aguilar was really very happy because in the end the inmates could hear what Jaw often suggested. But the cohesiveness of the convicts made Winter unhappy. He ordered his men to summon Erwin to his office. There Winter explained that no prisoners died in vain at his hands during his tenure. He had followed all sorts of rules which he thought worked well. Winter knew that Erwin had commanded thousands of soldiers, but things were different when he was in control of a prison. And in the next two minutes the wall will be torn down. Sure enough, suddenly a destroyer truck appeared to try to destroy the wall. Seeing the truck want to destroy his business, Aguilar then put up his body to block the truck. He doesn't care what happens, the important thing is that the wall is not destroyed. Because Aguilar is stubborn, Winter orders his men to shoot Aguilar. Then Aguilar was immediately killed in the incident. Seeing Aguilar dead, all the prisoners fell silent. Then Erwin approached a prisoner who was formerly a sergeant major, namely Delvo. He asked Delvo to give orders to all the inmates together. Delvo climbed the ruins of the wall and spoke loudly to ask all the prisoners together. At first all the prisoners were surprised, 
But when they had gathered, Erwin then stood in front of all the inmates. He talks about how great a Marine Corps man named Aguilar is. Apart from giving speeches, all the prisoners immediately sang their national anthem which made the sense of unity even more gathered. Which of course made Winter even hotter to see the incident. Winter immediately asked all the inmates to return to their respective cells. Worried that Irwin has plans to take over the prison, Winter's men advise him to call General Willer immediately. The next day, Winter was right to call General Willer to report the incident. He says that he thinks Irwin has lost control. He is insane and tries to take over the prison. Not believing Winter's words, Willer asks to meet with Irwin. They then talked about Irwin's complaints during his imprisonment. While they were talking Winter got a letter. The contents of the letter is information that General Willer will be kidnapped by one of the inmates. Seeing the letter, Winter immediately announced to the guards to immediately secure General Willer. Even though General Willer was listening to Irwin's complaints about how bad Winter's command was. As a result, when the conversation was entering a serious level, the guards immediately stopped their conversation. They forcibly pulled General Willer away from Irwin. Not only that, they also asked all the inmates to lie down and surrender. After everything was safe, General Willer then said goodbye. He still didn't understand why he was suddenly pulled like that. Before he left, General Willer had signaled to Winter to immediately fix the rules. If he heard again that one inmate had died, he would immediately remove Winter from his command position. After General Willer left, Winter immediately launched a plan to deny all plans that Irwin had. The first thing to do is throw Irwin's colleagues who are always seen with him. They were put in an isolation room so Irwin could not talk with them. Irwin, who could only see the incident, was silent. Then while he was eating his food, his colleagues still approached Irwin to ask for an explanation. They also have plans to discuss the transfer of power. The first thing Irwin did was outwit the guard who was on duty in the canteen. After that method worked, then Irwin asked all the inmates to listen to his orders. He admits that he is guilty. He never heard the president's orders and others. But even though he is the wrong person, but that can't make anyone lose his identity as a soldier. Then Irwin read out the rules of how a soldier can take power. After reading the seven points, Irwin confirms to all the inmates that they must unite to overthrow Winter's power. All the inmates immediately cheered very loudly. After the meeting, Irwin held a second meeting with his colleagues who had come out of the isolation room. Irwin explains how they broke into the security of the Winter office. The first thing they do is eliminate several important things including helicopters, water trucks, and of course their most important enemy is snipers. He also asked Enriquez to maintain field parameters so that several other inmates could focus on their respective duties. When all his comrades had understood, he asked them all to disperse. Because he had a feeling that Irwin would carry out a rebellion. Winter immediately called a bookie he trusted, namely Yates. He asked Yates to talk to him about what Irwin was going to do. Yates also told him that Irwin was on his way to war. Winter smiled. Then he gave Yates an offer to be his informant in charge of spying on every plot Irwin had, in exchange for a reduced sentence. But what Winter did turned out to be what Irwin had expected. After meeting with Winter, Irwin immediately approached him. He knew Winter knew the potential Yates had. Therefore he offered him a job to spy on his plan. Now Irwin asked Yates to choose which side he would side with. Yates was silent. The next day he went back to Winter to negotiate. Yates would tell Irwin the whole plan on the condition that he should be released from prison in the morning. Because he thought what he was doing was too risky. When all the inmates have been knocked down, then he will be their target. But Winder didn't agree. He couldn't just let Yates out. He would at least get it out seven days after Irwin's plan failed. But this made Yates unhappy. He also betrayed by taking Winder's flag which made Winder angry and immediately kicked Yates out. Upon learning of the flag theft, Winter orders his colleagues to search each cell to find out who stole the flag. While the prisoners were gathered in the middle of the field. When all the inmates were gathered in the middle, Winter asked how many troops were searching the entire cell. His men replied, 1000 troops. Without them realizing it, Irwin actually carried out his plan in the middle of the field. As a result, several guards who were in the field were unable to stem the attacks of the inmates who were trying to break into the inside. The war began. Erwin immediately commanded all his soldiers to block the entrance of the wardens who wanted to fight them. Then he asked Delvo to bring out their ultimate weapon, which would penetrate Winter's defenses. Winter really never thought, Erwin had a throwing weapon that could destroy his office. Not only that, they also have a cannon that can burn down the sniper guard posts. Feeling it was time to take out the water cannon, 
Winner asked his men to take out the weapon. But Erwin had predicted it beforehand. He immediately asked his men to turn off the water line which made the water cannon not work. Soldiers increasingly manage to control the prison. When the situation is chaotic, Winner gets a communication call from Erwin. If this time the prison has been successfully controlled by them. But Winder still doesn't want to lose, he asks his partner to take out their last weapon, the helicopter. But again Erwin managed to predict it. He ordered his soldiers to reload the water cannons and started attacking the helicopters. As a result the helicopter went out of control, and this is where Yates worked. He immediately climbed a rope that the soldiers had stuck to the helicopter. But accidentally the rope broke, and made Yates have to work quite hard. Even so Yates managed to climb the rope and immediately took over the helicopter. Then he damaged the helicopter by crashing its tail on the last post belonging to snipers. In this situation, Winter had lost badly. He could do nothing but pass down the final ultimatum, namely weapons with real bullets. Winter then came out while carrying his men who were ready to shoot. All the inmates gathered to block. He shouted loudly to ask all the inmates to lie down. If they didn't want to follow his directions, then they had to be prepared to be shot dead. The inmates still maintained their position. But Erwin who felt that they had lost asked all his soldiers to lie down. It was true that the soldiers followed Erwin's directions. Then when Winter asked Erwin to do it, he refused. Erwin immediately took the flag and put it on the pole. What Erwin did made Winter really angry. He asks Erwin not to do that. But Erwin still put up the flag. And when the flag is set, he salutes. An emotional Winter decides to shoot Erwin multiple times to death which causes his men to arrest himself. Winter was eventually charged with abusing his power in a violent manner. While Erwin's name is enshrined in a stone that is now the foundation of a new wall in the prison. The end. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next video.